Hey y'all, it's Diane with Shaw Craft One in my old barn door. And this will be the first video of a series um, where I show you guys what I do um, to make a ring binder journal. Now, it is a labor intensive job. Uh, it takes a long time. It takes a lot of work. So um, it's just going to be videos in small pieces just so that you can see each part of the process. So I just thought I would go ahead and get started with it because I've had a lot of people who've asked me to do this series. So here we go. So the first step um, that I do is I pick my ring binder. And then I'm going to clean this up because this one needs to be wiped down and some things done to it to make sure that it's ready um, for to become a journal. I love, love, love the size of this. It is about a little more than eight and a quarter inches wide. And it is ten and a half inches long. So it's a good, good size ring binder. So I start with that and I'll clean this up. Um, I'm not going to do it on camera because that would be completely boring for you guys to see me do that. <laughs> so anyways, um, I will clean it up and um, I'll come right back. Actually, I wanted to let you guys know this is what I clean them with. I clean them with um, just basically baby wipes because they're, they're not too wet. Like if you get a washcloth and, and wet it, you know, you're going to have a lot of water in it and it's, you know, you're, you're going to take the risk of, um, damaging your book, um, the more water that you have, but the baby wipes, um, you know, they don't have a whole lot of water or a whole lot of fluid or liquid or whatever you want to call it in them. And it usually takes several of them to clean it. So basically you just want to real easily wipe because if you wipe too hard, you also take a chance of, um, uh, you know, scrubbing some of the paper off or whatever. So you clean it the best you can. And what's left, you appreciate um, for it showing its age. <laughs> so that's basically how I do it. Now, if I find a book that has maybe a little bit of mold or something on it, um, I will take my spray bleach and spray it onto a baby wipe just to kill the mold and make sure, you know, that there's nothing on there that's going to be harmful to um, the customer who purchases that particular journal. Also, another trick you can use is um, if, you know, if you've got a book that's got a lot of mold on it, if you will take it and put it in a large Ziploc bag, put some um, baking soda in the bag, and then you put that in the freezer for 24 hours. Okay, and that kills the mold. Then you take it out and you, I usually take a paint, an old paintbrush and I dust all of the um, baking soda out of it. And then I wipe everything down and make sure all of the dead mold is wiped off. Um, you know, so you just have to do it carefully. It's a, it's a bit of a process, but it's worth it to be able to save a book. So, um, and you see, see all the dirt I'm getting off of it. So anyways, that's just, um, a little bit of a tip to, um, give you some ideas of what you need to do when you're cleaning your books. So I'm going to go ahead and finish cleaning this book the rest of the way and I'll come right back. Okay, I wanted to share something else with y'all about um, the cleaning of the book. Um, a lot of times when you buy a book, you know, you'll have a sticker on it. And sometimes those stickers have been there for a while. And it takes, you know, sometimes when you're trying to take that sticker off, it'll take the paint, or not the paint, but the paper off of the book. So what I do is I will take an old gift card or an old... Um, credit card or whatever you have and I will try to very carefully just go around the edges of that sticker and try to loosen it up now this does not always work but I've found that this is the easiest way to try to get your stickers off and then you just keep let me see if I can zoom in a little bit so you can kind of see what I'm doing sorry for making you dizzy if I did 
So you just basically, you just kind of keep pushing. Don't push down too hard because you'll push into the paper on the cover. Um, so you just kind of go around all the edges and you just kind of let it roll up as best you can. Now sometimes your card will start getting sticky so you just switch it around. But this way, and what I did first was I wiped over it real good with the baby wipe. And the baby wipe got it kind of damp for me so that it would kind of loosen up the stickiness of the sticker. So I just keep going around the edges and let that curl up, trying not to make any marks on my book. And there we go. The sticker came up. So now you'll still have a little bit of the sticky tape. So I just try to rub that off as best I can. And it may or may not always come off, but you can get it off, you know, to a point to where you can use it. So, but this one seems to be coming off pretty good. So, That's kind of how you get your stickers off. I have noticed on like the Reader's Digest books, if they have stickers on them, their paper tears really easily. Usually what you're going to have to do is cover, cover over that sticker. Gracie, calm down. So anyways, just to kind of give you a little tent, tip or hint on getting the stickers off. So um, I'll finish cleaning and I'll come right back. Okay, so now my book is about as clean as it's going to get. So, um, you can see on the book, there's a little bit of wear right here. So, but to me, that adds to um, the aging of the book. So, what I may do is um, just do like a clear coat over this so that this paper doesn't peel away. Um, and just leave it because it's such a pretty cover and um, you know that just kind of adds to the aging effect now what you'll also see is you see how worn um, the color is on the spine so I will actually oh let, I'm sorry I've got you zoomed in <laughs> there we go so I will probably put some fabric or something to that effect um, on the spine just to make it a little prettier and um, you know give it a little more stability and strength because if you can see it's starting to crack just a little bit right there so I will do some reinforcing on this spine and I may even show you you know the process of doing that if you guys want to see that let me know in the comments below now also on the edges of the book you can see you know that some of the paper is coming loose so I'll put some book corners but what I'll also do because on the you know on the very edges um, the papers kind of coming loose as well so what I like to do um, with that is I'll put washi around it a real pretty washi around it and it just kind of gives adds decoration to the cover and um, you know it reinforces of the paper that's coming loose on on the edges of the cover so inside I did scrub inside but it's just stained up real good you can see here in the back now I did not clean the pages yet and these are um, plastic sleeves so I will be able to go through and clean these see how it's got some some yuck on it right here so I'll be able to go through and clean these off I just haven't done that part yet um, I'll do that off camera because I'm sure y'all don't want to see that because it's going to take me a while to clean all these pages. <laughs> and I may not use all these pages. So what I'll do is I'll pick pages and figure out which ones I'm going to use and I'll clean those. I'll leave the rest in a plastic bag until, you know, I get ready to use those again and then I'll clean them. But anyways, so I did scrub in the back here, but it's got some staining here and here. So what I'll do is I'll, um, I'll put some... Uh, some new paper on the inside um, to cover up the staining and stuff like that. So we'll go through the whole process, but I'm just kind of giving you, you know, some ideas of things that you're going to have to do to get your journal prepared. Um, this piece here, I absolutely love. I love the fact that 
it's in someone's handwriting. I love the tape that they used. I don't know if y'all can tell, but it's like, do you see the kind of tape they used? It's almost like the tape that you use um, with gauze. <laughs> So, it's super funny. I don't know what it's going to do when I take it off. I kind of want to... I may put this back in the front once I put new paper here. I may put this back in the front as the front part of the front cover. Or I might put it in the back. I don't know. We'll see. But I do want to incorporate this back into the journal because it is in um, the previous owner's handwriting. So, let me see if I can get this to come off. There we go. Okay, so I'm not going to take it all the way off yet because I want to leave it there till I get ready to start preparing my journal. Um, so the next step I do once I have my, my book clean is I'm going to take all of these pages out. So I'll open it up. I'm going to take everything out and I'm just going to keep them stacked together how they were in the journal. And I'm going to set these to the side because I'll, um, it'll be a minute before I get ready to pick from those to be able to use them. So now I have my blank journal. So what I'm going to do, this first page I did go ahead and clean. So what I'll do is I'm going to take my measurements from this first page. This first page will be my God, <clears throat> excuse me. It'll be the guide that I use for not only the measurements of the pages that I cut to go in the journal, but it's also going to be my guide for punching the holes. And I'll show you what I use to punch the holes because I've had a lot of people ask. That's what I use to punch the holes. Yes, I punch every single hole because now every now and then I'll swap it out for this one this is a hole punch too um because my hands will start getting sore using this one lucy what's wrong with you you need to go potty baby hold on um so yes i punch every single hole by hand the reason i do that is because it's very hard to find a hole punch to fit every kind of ring journal that you want to use some some of them have five rings some of them have three rings some of them have two rings some of them have four rings and you're not going to be able to find a hole punch that's going to accommodate all of that so i just i just do it by hand <laughs> i do the manual way so that's how i punch my holes hang on i'm gonna let lucy out okay so anyways this is this page will be my guide so now I'm going to set my ring binder aside and kind of let it dry from where I've wet it with the wipe. So I'm just going to set them to the side and I'm going to take my measurements off of this page. So I'm just going to measure it. I don't know if you guys can see my mat good, but that's okay. So we're going to go seven inches wide. So I'm going to take a sticky note. And then... Um, 10 and a quarter inches long. Okay, I'm going to take my little sticky note and I'm going to put it on my page. And that way I know what I need to cut all of my pages at. Okay, now just to kind of give you guys fair warning, this is going to be a very detailed series um, because I have had a lot of people who you know, who have wanted me to do this. So I'm going to give you every detail I can possibly think of um, so that you know how labor intensive it is, but also so that you know the steps that you need to take and you can prepare yourself when you get ready to do your ring binder journals. Also, I want to um, be able to, I'm hoping that the ladies, I had the five ring binder kits that I sold from my Etsy shop and they did all sell. So I'm hoping those ladies will see the videos and follow along and they'll be able to make their own ring binder journals. Okay, so I'm going to sit this over here so that I have my guide. And then the next step, let me put my hole punches up out of the way, is I'm going to pick my design papers that I want to use in my journal. And I usually like to do about 
between 10 and 15 pages of the design paper. So what I, what I do is I figure out what theme um, I want. And in this particular journal, I'm going to do a country style um, recipe style journal. So it's going to be a mix. So um, I pulled out, a, I have a lot of my Seven Gypsies um, canvas core paper that will go with this theme. Look how pretty that is. So I'm going to go through and choose my papers. Okay, so I definitely think I want to use this one. I want to use this one if I can figure out how to get the plastic off of it. This is, these are my last two pieces of these. Um, so, but this one will be really cool. And I may use this as a page or I may cut it up and use these signs throughout the book. It's so pretty on the back too. I wish I had more than one because I'd use it as a page and to cut the, <laughs> the pieces. Then I have this one, which is the chicken wire. I have this one, which screams kitchen. So um, this one's kind of more like um, um, an old world style. So I don't know yet, but how pretty is the back? Then I have these. If I can get them out of the plastic. So I had one sheet of these left. I actually think I have some more in my shop. I'm not sure. But I do believe I have more of these in my shop. Because I've got several more in my box in there. So I will cut these up and use them as journal cards. And I have these. I'll cut these up and use them as journal cards. So I need to set these to a different side. Because I know those are not going to be actual pages. These are super cute. They're gardening, but to me, gardening also goes along with recipe because you have to garden to get your recipe, you know, your supplies for your recipe. So I am going to use some of these. Then there's this one. This is called General Store on Ivory. Super, super cute. And that goes well with the recipe kind. So I'll probably make that a page. Then I have this. Um, not sure if I'll use this as a page. Or if I will cut some of the, you know, the banners out and use those to decorate in the book. So I'm going to put that to that side. Then I want to add some color. Beautiful, beautiful um, yellow. This is called Gold and White Mini Roses. So any of these papers that you see that you would like some of, let me know. And if I don't have it, I can get it for you. I pulled this one just because I love this pattern. And I love this pattern. Then I have my farmhouse kitchen pack that I want to use. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up and pull these out. So this can be a page. I'm going to sit this to the side because I'm not going to need two of them. This can be a page. This can be a page. I love the pots and pans. That's super cute. This, I already have one of these, so I don't need either one of these. This one's cute. I love it with the food and the animals. And I think this one is the same exact thing. So I'm going to put one of each in there just so I can pick and choose between which one I want. Okay, so this one I already have. This is the Farmhouse Kitchen Labels. So I'm going to put it to the side. This one's super cute. Farmhouse Kitchen, that one's cute. I might have one like that already. I'll have to look through and see. Okay. So now let me count how many pages I've got here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. All right, so that's fourteen. Um, and then I have this little pack here. I found this in my craft room. 
and evidently it was something that I was working on before and just kind of stopped in the middle of a project or something. So I haven't even looked to see what's in here. So let's check it out and see what we've got in here. So that's cute. I like it with the chicken and the sunflowers and that'll add some, um, some color. So that'll be one of my book pages that I put in here. Let me see what books we have. I like the farm. This looks like a, oh, it's a Whitman. Super cute. So we might use some pages from that and the little red hen. I won't use any pages from that because I'm going to make a journal out of that. So let's see what we have. These are cute. These are super cute. Look at the farm. So I'll probably use that. I don't want to go through book pages yet, though. I want to go through the design papers. Let me just look and see what kind of design papers we have in here. So I'm going to set the book pages to the side because we'll do that next. Okay, so we've got some color. So we got some reds. And we've got some florals. Ooh, I definitely want to use the strawberries. That one's going in there for sure. Let me see what I have in here. Not sure that I'll use that one because it's more cowboyish than it is, you know, country recipe type. Okay, so there's another one of those. That's good to know I have another one. So I'll probably use that to cut, um, cut the signs out of and use the other one as an actual page. These I love, so I'll probably put this to the side to be able to use it for um, ephemera. This one doesn't really go with farmhouse style. It's more of a grunge. And this one could um, definitely be farmhouse style. Look, it's got Vicks Floral Guide, vegetable seeds, flower seeds. So this is kind of gardeny. So this is one of the Seven Gypsies sheets. This is from the Architectures Collection. So I'm going to put that over here to the side just um, because I may want to use it. All right, so now we've got our papers picked. So the next step we do is we are going to go through and we're going to cut. Um, well, no, we're not. We're not cutting yet. The next thing we do, let me just check, check my time here. I don't want the videos to be, um, you know, ridiculously long or anything. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of my pieces that I'm thinking I'm going to use for ephemera and decorating inside the book, and I'm going to sit them to the side. I'm going to sit these over here. And then we're going to go, th what we start doing now is picking our book pages. So we've got what, 15 or 16 of our design papers. So I'm going to sit those to the side and then I'm going to start picking book papers or book pages. And y'all, <laughs> I wish I could show you the stack of books I have over here <laughs> that I'm getting ready to go through. Um, but I may use some of these that I've already pulled. Now, see, I don't think I'll use this one because it's more farmhouse style. And even though it's got the garden and stuff in it, um, I don't know. I just don't know that I want that to go in a recipe journal. This one, too. So we'll wait on that one. That one's cute. I may use that one. I just like it because it's got the corn and the pig and the chicks. Yep, we'll definitely use that one. All right, so we're going to keep that one. This one is one that I had used or tried to use previously, but I like this. I think that will be used as a page. Y'all, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, when I start picking book pages for these journals, <laughs> I always pick way too many. So then I have to go back through and pick and choose which ones I'm not going to use. <laughs> And I usually do that after I've already punched all the stinking holes in it. <laughs> so, I don't know. It's just crazy. All right. So, that one I don't think I'm going to use. That one I don't think I'm going to use. I want, what I'm looking for is stuff that, um, you know, kind of speaks to me of, Country and recipes. Okay, so like this. This is super cute. I love, love, love it with the apples. And look at the rooster. 
and then this has like good um, scriptures and um, encouraging words and it's kind of like a um, it's very similar to like a daily devotional but I love 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 the colors in it so I'm definitely using that one and I'll probably use a couple of them um, a couple of pages of these because this is just adorable so I'm gonna use that one look how stinking cute that pig is with the pink I think I'm probably going to have to use that one. And then look, it's a turkey. I should have used that one in my Thanksgiving book. Okay. So this is the process, guys. I just start going through pages from books. I like this one because it's got the apples in it. So we're going to put that one in the pile of keeps. The house in Willow Wood. That's cute. You know what? I may, I love that that it's gardening so I'm gonna keep that one I like this one this is actually um, like a little farmhouse scene so I'm gonna keep that one let's see this is super cute this comes from a um, it's a country settings book I have it over here somewhere let's see if I can find it it comes from this book so, you know, that just screams country and farmy and look how cute. Look how stinking cute that is. So, um, like I say, I have lots of books over here that <laughs> I'm going to go through and pick pages from. But this is really, really cute. Look how cute that is. I love that. This tells you how to do some kind of a quilt. And then I love this. Little boy and his dad on the farm. So we'll keep that one. And this one I think we already looked at. But I liked it because it has the form on it. So we'll keep that one. And we'll keep that one. Alright. So these we're not going to use right now. So I'm going to start a separate stack of stuff. I'm probably going to send these to mom. I'm um, working on making her a pack of stuff. Because she's going to be working on a journal um, for me. So, I'll make her a little stack of stuff. And I have this little book that I'm going to put in it. So, I'm just going to get her a stack ready to send her. Okay. So, now we've gone through our loose pages. Let me count. One, two, three, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So we've got what did I say? Sixteen pages of the design pages, and then thirteen of these. So we're going to need some more book pages. So um, because it's a recipe book, I know that I definitely want to use a few of these, and I love how the edges are perforated. So. Um, this is a good recipe, applesauce nut bread, and there's apples in the journal, so we'll use that one. And I kind of like to go through the recipes just to see what they they are, so I can pick like a, a good recipe that goes with, um, you know, with that style of journal. Oh, now see, bluegrass students' favorite foods, and this has... Um, little kitchen tips so I definitely want to use that one because I mean bluegrass screams country right Peter panic buttons <laughs> I have never heard of that before it looks like it's like some kind of peanut butter ball or something that's super cute I think I want to put that one in there so that's what three recipe pages We'll do four recipe, four of these kind of recipe pages. Boiled cookies. That sounds disgusting. Okay, here's some more of these really cute kitchen tips. First aid in household emergencies. <laughs> and then, ooh, this was dates to remember. I wonder what year this was. Here's a calendar. So, I'm thinking it usually, they'll give you the year before and the year after. So, I'm thinking it might have been 1989. Um, 
for this book. Super cute. Okay, so I think we have a weight. I kind of like this too. But it has that calendar on the back. I don't know if I want to use that. So, anyways, we've got us a few of the recipe pages. And I'm going to pull some more recipe page stuff. But, um, then I have, I'm trying to find somewhere. This is what happens. I start getting piles and piles of stuff, and then I run out of room to sit stuff in my... <laughs> so, I have this Seed Company book. Super cute. And this is not vintage. This is from 2018. However... I mean, look, it's got all your vegetables and stuff in it. So, I definitely want a couple of pages of this to go into the recipe journal. So, let's just pick some pretties. I'm just, just going to pull a couple of pages. So, yes, I am ripping pages from books. I had, I've had a couple of people really um, complain on some of my videos about me ripping books, but what do you do? You know, the whole purpose of it is to save books, you know, and recreate books. So, okay, I have this all about seeds, and I thought it would be cute um, to go in like a recipe type journal. These pages are so stinking cute. Look at the sunflowers. I think I may use that one. I'm just trying to get to the center so I can separate them. Yeah, we're definitely going to use the sunflower page. Oh, it's got great colors. So, that one is a definite. So, we use that one. And this is what I do, guys. I just pull out all my books. <laughs> I pile them up on the desk beside me, and I just start going through them. Okay. And then I make a separate stack of the ones I've already went through. And I put them in a different spot. This is a music around the world. So I was going to go through here and see if I could find, you know, anything recipe-ish or country-ish. That's about a sailor. This is more... Um, this was like a children's school music book, and I don't see anything in here that's kind of like, well, that one says at the market. We could use that one. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, we'll definitely use that one, because I always like to add a little bit of something music-y in every book that I do. Okay. Then we have this um, Golden Book Illustrated Dictionary, and it, I do have F, so I'm hoping that they have the word farm in here. So, it might even have the word country. We'll look for both of them. Hey, there's Coop. We could use that one. So I'm going to hold my place there. There's country, but that's more about, I don't know if I want to use country or not, but I do want to find the center. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to go ahead and cut these pages out so I can get to them. Now, y'all have to leave me the uh, messages in the comments if I'm being too detailed, if I'm showing you too much, let me know. Um, if my videos are too long, let me know, and I can adjust accordingly. Now, see, I like this page because it's got corn, it's got the cow, that's kind of country-ish. It's got cranberries, which really isn't country. Well, it could be. Oh, and it's got the coop on it, so this one's perfect. So, when... Um, in the ring binder journals, like in, in a lot of journals, I would use this as just a, like a page. But in the ring binder journals, you only need one page at a time. So, I'll cut this one in half and I'll have two pages of that. So, super cute little definition pages. So, we're done with that book. 
Then I have this really cool, it's called Our, Our Town. It was a teacher's edition of a school reader. So in the front it has all the teaching stuff. Oh, and you know what? In the back I've already used all of the stuff out of it. <laughs> so I guess we won't use this one. Um, but these pages really, really, really feel cool. So, but I, they're, they're too thin to put in a ring binder journal. So we won't use any of that one. Then we have this one, which, um, it's kind of like a, it's a school reader, but it reminds me a lot of the Dick and Jane books. Um, so I think we're just going to see if we can find something in here about country or recipes. There's a goat. Oh, there's mom cooking. Let's take that one. We'll do the mom cooking. And then, what else do we have? There's mom gardening. That one doesn't really, it's got a lot of bicycles and stuff in it, so that kind of doesn't, it doesn't go. So this is the process. I just go through each of the books and I pull out pages and we're at about 35 minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the video here. I'm going to go ahead and pick out the rest of the pages for the book and then I'll come back and we'll go to the next steps of creating our ring binder journal. So you guys leave me comments, questions, um, any kind of information below that you would like to see um, in this series and um, I'll, that way I'll be, be sure that I can get to that for you. So don't forget to like and subscribe and um, yeah, I'll come back and do the next, um, the next, what I'll probably do is number the series. So this will be video one and then the next one will be video two, you know, the drill. So be looking for the next one and thanks for watching. You guys have a great day. Big hugs.